Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, Attention Coach Jeff Copper, and with us today is Rob Tedisco. Uh, welcome to the show, Rob. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Uh, Rob is um, a, a huge asset to the ADHD community. Rob has been a, a prosecuting attorney, uh, uh, you, you, you do criminal work, educational work. Um, he's worked, uh, he's, he's, he's been a writer for uh, Attention Magazine, Attitude Magazine, among others. Is that right? That's correct. Um, our topic today is Rob and I were having a conversation about a very difficult situation that he deals with on a regular basis and that is those with ADHD that have um, they're in trouble with the law and they've got a choice to do time or do probation. Is that, is that, is that right? Yeah, a lot of times what will happen is there will be an offer of a, an alternative sentence. It's kind of like a plea plea bargaining type thing? Where, Correct. Okay. It's during the plea bargaining process and what happens typically is that um, the prosecutor or the court will offer you an alternative uh -huh. and the defendant and counsel, if it's juvenile, it's usually the parents are involved in this process and they will typically offer a straight incarceratory sentence, uh -huh. 60 days, four months, um, or straight probation. And one of the difficulties in a situation like that is that um, adolescents with ADHD uh, cognitively have a difficult time really making a, an accurate judgment as to what they should do. And you have to put yourself in their position mm -hmm. because what happens is they typically are incarcerated at the time this offer comes up. And the offer of probation, for instance, with a felony, it's a five-year probation. And what happens is the probation means they will be getting out of jail now. Uh -huh. The jail sentence means they will have to stay in jail a relatively short period of time, 60 days, four months, that uh -huh. type of thing. And usually it's even less than that in actual time because you get credit inside for good time uh -huh. served. Yep. And what happens is the decision really comes down to I could go home today uh -huh. Or and be on probation, or you want me to sit in here for another three or four months. And to an ADHD adolescent, what they don't see and don't appreciate is that the probationary sentence, even though in the short run it means I go home today, having the sword of probation hanging over their head means they're in danger of being violated on probation and ultimately having to do a lot more jail time. And, and, and if I can jump in here, is, is to me, I think if, 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 if I had been in jail and I had the option to get out, I would jump at that. Like, I want to do that. But the thing about it is, what I understand is that when you start to think about being on probation for five years and the ADHD traits that are associated with, like meeting with your parole officer and stuff on time, when you think about that, that's a potential recipe for disaster, right? It really is because you can't go to jail for being late to an appointment. But if it's an appointment with your parole or probation officer, you could go to jail for that or if you miss that appointment. So that's just a simple ADHD trait. But a lot of these adolescents have issues involving addiction, so there's substance abuse, and a lot of time they'll get violated for curfew violations or committing another crime. Uh -huh. And so the, the jail time that they ultimately do will be a lot longer than what is being offered at the outset. And they just have difficulty processing that accurately. And, and, so, and, and, the, and the purpose of this show is if you're watching, if, if you are potentially in the situation, we want to educate you. And if you're in the situation, like, listen, this has been documented because, Rob, what I'm hearing you say is so many times is this is a situation that you're dealing with and they're going to jump at, I want to get out. But if we back up for a second and say, listen, I know three months in, in, in jail or prison is, is kind of a difficult time, but think about five years on parole and the discipline that you have to do and showing up on time. And if you break that, it's going to create a bigger problem for you. And so sometimes it's worth pausing and say, maybe I should do that time a little bit and prevent myself from bigger problems. It is, and, and to compound that dilemma, you have parents typically that are involved in the case and s appreciate the, um, the bigger picture here. Uh -huh. And as an attorney, you are conflicted because you know, um, especially knowing uh, teens with, uh, with ADHD, you know that they are at high risk for being incarcerated because they violate probation. The parents know that. Um, you know they're doing themselves a disservice, but you represent the teen. You don't represent the parents. And so you have to respect the wishes of your client because that's where the relationship is. That's a, that's a wow. So I, I didn't really think about that because you're representing the teen, not the parents. And so you've got to kind of deal with the wishes of some of that stuff. And this, wow. 
So what, what's interesting to me is this is kind of your, your, your gut reaction is to go in a certain direction, but if you pause and think about it and look at the symptoms, it's worth pausing and saying, wait a second, maybe this is not really the best course of action. It's kind of counterintuitive. It really is, and you try to convince your clients and you try to tell him you know, how much at risk they are and how, what they're putting themselves into, but the bottom line is you have a situation where these um, uh, adolescents don't appreciate the consequences of the act they committed with the consequence of getting arrested or going through the system to begin with, much less worrying about violating terms of probation. And mm -hmm. so it becomes a huge nightmare. Yep. yep. Um, I, and I just want to kind of wrap that and reiterate is you made a really good point a second ago that I want to accent and that is, you know, you can be late for a business meeting, you can be late to meet a friend, but if you're late meeting a parole officer, it's a completely different game to accent um, how ADHD traits can come in because if it's a time management issue, this is not the area where you really want to mess around. Especially when uh, oftentimes they will put curfew restrictions yep. on these teens. They have to be home at a certain time. Uh, it's not against the law to be out at that time, but if you're on probation or parole and that's a curfew violation, you could find yourself in jail yep. for not complying. Yep. Yep. So, um, For those that are, that are watching, if you want to learn more about Rob, he's the president of the EDGE Foundation. Executive director, actually. Exa excuse me, executive director of EDGE Foundation, which is edgefoundation.org, right? Correct. Um, and Rob's doing a lot of great work. As I, I mentioned at the beginning, he's had a lot of experience. He's a great advocate for the ADHD community, and I encourage you to go uh, check it out. There's a wealth of information, and there's also a lot of great resources. Uh, they're involved with uh, uh, Shire Pharmaceutical giving scholarships and providing coaching for those in college. They, he's just doing a great job. So with that, Rob, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, John. Take care.